Hello, 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 and welcome to tutorial number 27 of the series of 2020, uh, where I'm going to show you how to do a two-dimensional, a cool two-dimensional pattern um, with, with some random variations, but also quite um, restricted in, in, in your design decisions. So to say, um, we are in Stockholm today, uh, so the tutorial is going to be pretty short and this is just something that I find cool and I wanted to share with you. So I'll start, actually I will not be using anything in Rhino, I will do everything in Grasshopper for this one. And I will start in Grasshopper by creating one cell or one rectangle for my pattern, right? So that everything that happens inside of that rectangle is going to be kind of repeated in a larger array. So I'll just, um, in, in, in Grasshopper, I'll just type in rectangle. I'll choose the orange one, which means that it just will draw it on a plane, right? Our XY plane here, rectangle. And I'll specify its size here, so I'll say one by one, right? And that's all I need, right? Um, I do see this grid here, and that's because the plane is being shown. So if, if it's kind of funky for you and you actually want to just see the rectangle, just create an empty curve component here, pl plug in the rectangle output to the, to the curve component and hide the rectangle uh, node here. So then you you will not see the plane, you will only see the, the curve, right? Which is this. And now I will take this curve and I will make an array, uh, a rectangular array from it, right? So I just create array rec uh, a rectangular array node here and I will use this curve as my geometry. And also I will use the same curve as my cell, meaning that it's going to be, the cell dictates the step size, right? So it's going to dictate that this curve is going to be moved by its own width to the left uh, and by its own height or, or length to the uh, top, in the top view, doesn't matter. So I'll just do, do it like so. And then let's start off pretty simple, I'll just make uh, I'll, I'll just do a grid of 4 by 4 so I'll just create a slider and connect 4 by 4 here like that okay so now we have our um, a, a, a grid of, 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 of these rectangles hmm. what if we take this and we flatten it out not flat, sorry graft it uh, so basically by grafting it, I'm taking every rectangle and I'm and I am placing it in a separate data tree branch Meaning that it's every rectangle before Was in the same list, right? So before we had the list of 16 rectangles easy Right a single list 16 rectangles and when I graft it it becomes 16 lists with one rectangle in each list, meaning that I kind of separate them data-wise. And now um, let's start creating some sort of a um, element in each of these rectangles. So what I'm thinking of doing is, hmm, bear with me, I'm thinking of, of, of creating two lines like these from here to here and from here to here well, that's that's an ugly <laughs> a very very ugly way of of drawing it but basically a line that goes from middle point here to middle point uh, to middle point here and from middle point here to middle point here these two lines so I want to make those but also what I want to do is I want to be able to transform those lines to an arc like that so if a slider those uh, those lines as I move the slider they kind of will start bulging in into the rectangle let's do that <clears throat> so first of all I need to create those middle points here and I can do that by using explode 
by exploding these um, rectangles into separate segments. So here I have four lines for each rectangle. And by using evaluate length component, evaluate length, and connecting those segments to the evaluate length component and saying, give me the middle point. So give me 0 0.5. 0 0.5 like so there we go so now we can see um, these these uh, we have the middle points on each of these segments and here the middle points are doubled all right so we have that done um, what's next what's next what's next I need to connect them right so I do have four points in each branch, in each list, right? So I can use point list node, uh, and the numbers are way too small, so I'll just connect one to it. Oh, that's way too big, 0 point, uh, 0 point 0.1. There we go. Um, so with points uh, node, I can see that this is a zero, this is a three, this is a one, and this is a two, right? And these are duplicate points, so meaning that there are going to be two numbers, but I'm looking at the black numbers here. So zero, one, two, three, it goes counterclockwise from here. So the, uh, this is basically um, where each point is in, in a list, right? I did this because now as I will separate those points with list item into separate outputs, so I just, with list item I just connect those points to the L input here. <clears throat> so list item by default will give me always the first um, item in the list, which is here. But I want other three as well. So I'll just zoom in and I click the plus sign here. So this is the second item in the list, third item, and fourth item, meaning I have first, second, third, and fourth point, first, second, uh, third, and fourth point, and, and so on, right? So I've separated them out. So these are all of the first points, all of the second points, all of the third, all of the fourth points. Okay. And now I can see that I want to connect point 0 with point 3, right? Uh, or, or rather, yeah, uh, index, point index 0 with point index 3. So this output here and the last output here. I will connect them with a line, line tool, like so. And I end up getting something like this, right? And it, of course, happens for every cell, right? As you can see. Okay, so we have that. But what about the, the other one? And also, actually, while we're still here, remember where I said that I want this line to be able to become an arc as I move a slider? I want to want to want to want to fix it so i will not be using a straight line component here but rather i will go to curve i'll go to spline and i'll use bezier span uh, node here which basically um, does create uh, can create a line segment a, a straight line segment but also it can create this kind of a cur curving um, curving line and the way it works is how do I show you how it works well basically you have a starting point right and you have some sort of a direction for a starting point like so and then you have an end point and you have another direction for an end point right so that's starting point starting direction end point ending direction and what it will do is it will draw a curve that is going to be like so right with two points and two directions so that's what we want to do okay so for directions i want for 
my start, the direction to be upwards in top view, which is going to be positive in Y axis. So I'll just use Y axis and connect it like so, right? Because Y is up, I believe. We'll see. Um, well, Y is up in the top view, Z is up in perspective view. And then we have end tangent, which is this point here, and I want it to go to the left, right? So it's going to be positive X axis. That is not an X axis. X unit X. There we go. And that is what it does. I believe it's correct. It's just that these are way too strong because factor is set to be one. What if instead of one, we use 0 0.5? and connect it again. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's much better. So now as I slide this, that's actually pretty cool. But uh, what's the maximum? I believe maximum should be 0 0.6. Yeah. So I'll edit and I'll say that maximum by for now it's 0 0.6. There we go. So now I can control it. And now we could do, do the same thing for the uh, second one, but I'm kind of lazy. So I will just take all of these um, rectangles that we have from the start, from our array, and I will measure their area, or even better, I will just get polygon centroid, polygon center, like that. And it gives me three different ways of how to calculate the center. I'll just use the top one. Let me actually just create a point and connect it like so. There we go. Let me move it here. So that's our polygon center. And I will just simply take all of these curves and just rotate them 180 degrees around this center point, right? These center points. So I'll just use rotate 3D. Rotate, uh, that's the wrong one. Try again. Rotate 3D like that. Um, and then we can have uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Resulting Bezier span, uh, yes, that is the curve. So that is what's going to be rotated. And the center of rotation is going to be the points here. And the angle is in radians. And we do not use radians because we are not a bunch of nerds, right? So we right click on the A input and choose degrees instead. And now we can, you know, use actual human numbers. So 180, just like that, connect them here, voila, and we have it going. Okay, so now I don't need a point list anymore, I'll delete that, and actually let me just see how it will look like, and that's how it looks like. Uh, perhaps I should hide the points here. Pretty cool, huh? Right? That's just from two arcs, and of course they connect, you know, in, in, in this kind of diagonal way. Now, let's make it a bit more funky. And by the way, also with, with this factor, remember this factor? We can kind of... Wow, wow. We can change it up, right? But we'll come back to this later. So let's make it a bit more funky as well. <clears throat> so these are all the uh, like that. These are all you know the bottom ones, and these are all the top ones, top arcs, bottom arcs, top arcs. Um, I want to merge them together, so I'll just use merge these and these like that. So now every data branch has two curves in it which we want to have, just like that. And I will, I believe I will rotate them again, rotate 3D. I'll take those curves and rotate them again around the same, um, same center point as we used before. Same old center point, 
actually i should probably just create a point component here just so that it's you know i don't like when lines are crossing too much so like that and let me hide constantly hide everything notice how i have everything hidden except the last node uh, always do that uh, will help you kind of follow what you're doing better so i will right click on the a input and choose degrees and now what i want to do is i want to every cell to have a random rotation right random uh, rotation of either 0 90 180 or 270 degrees so what i'm going to do is i will create a series of random random uh, numbers so i just use random here and for random numbers i will choose range um, so my range could be between um, 0 and 270 but that is not good because then it might give me 113 degrees which doesn't make sense i want it to be kind of you know kind of only rotate to either 0 90 180 or 270 so instead what i'm going to do i will create a panel and in that panel i'll say between 0 to 3 from 0 until 3 so it can only give me either 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 right that is it only has four options and i'll actually also right click on the random node here this is important right click on the random node and choose integer numbers so that it only gives us <clears throat> these kind of perfect not perfect but full numbers without any fractions so integer numbers okay so we have that and now number of random values uh, it's basically how many cells we have here right so i can get that number by asking how many data branches how many lists of these kind of two curves do we have here so i will extract it by using tree statistics node I'll connect my merge output to tree statistics and it gives us a bunch of you know like different paths and lengths of each path but the thing that we want is the count how many paths right how many branches and the answer is of course 16 right four by four so I'll just connect it like so we get our random numbers and there's one last thing is that these numbers are in a single list while all, all of the cells are in separate lists in separate branches so i need to graft these numbers so that they match up you know um every branch of these curves receives a single number right and so that they can be paired up and now as i grafted it and connected it seems not to oh of course it doesn't work sorry there's one last thing because right now it goes in between zero one uh, zero and three right so it's either zero one two or three i need to get zero ninety one eighty to two hundred seventy right so i need to multiply multiplication i need to multiply this uh these numbers by 90 right so it get, if it gives me if the random number generator gives me zero it's gonna be zero right zero multiplied by 90 is zero if it gives me one it's 90 if it me if it gives me two it's 180 if it gives me three it's 270 and now i will connect it to rotate 3d and this is what i get pretty cool huh okay so that is done this part is finished and now one last thing that i find quite quite interesting oh also remember the factor it's always nice to play around with it you know to to, to play around with these patterns um one last thing is where we have the count instead of four by four 
I, I will use where do we use let's use um, a hundred oops is a hundred by a hundred too much oops that's a thousand I want to see how a hundred by a hundred look like yeah it's it's a bit slow oh yeah it's it's a bit too much right uh, so let's do 50 by 50 yeah this is much better or even less 40 by 40 yeah there we go something like that that is good and I basically instead of using this um, not this this slider here to change the let me actually use it again it's, this is fun you know instead of using the slider to change the behavior like so i want to use uh, some sort of a image right um and let me open up photoshop real quick this is going to be the last thing that we do Photoshop, come on, come on. There we go. Uh, create new. And I need to create a new file um, with the size um, exact to how big this, this rectangle is, right? So I know that my cell size is one and I have count of 40 by 40, right? 40 by 40, meaning that it's going to be um, 40 by 40 pixels, right? So it's a very small one. What I'm um, actually, what I'm going to do is I will change my X and Y size to be like, let's say at least five times more. Or do we keep it? No, let's, I, I want to test it out. Let's keep it like that. So actually we just work with 40 by 40 pixels, right? Not more than that. Okay, 40 by 40. Hit create. That is our thing that we that we get. And here I will just use a small, small brush, even smaller. And I'll just create a mm, right. even smaller. Let's see, eight. Um, um, um. Smiley face. Yeah, bigger eye, bigger eye. Yeah, good enough. Okay, so smiley face, save as, and I'll just save it as an image. So 40 cells by 40 cells needed to have 40 by 40 pixels. Um, and I will just call this smiley save hit ok hit close and now we want to influence this number this factor number uh, with that image so first of all we need to create an image sampler node image sampler and i will double click on it to get to its menu and here under file path i will click it and i'll go to desktop and choose smiley hit open it's right here and i believe what do we need uh yeah uh, first of all we need to <clears throat> say what's driving the numbers right so in that's the channel so instead of having rgb colors i will say just give me color brightness right because it, it will give me a single color just like that and then x domain y domain 
um, I will just click this one, use image pixel dimensions, like that. So it goes between 1 and 40, should be a-okay. Anything else? I, I believe it's fine. I'll just hit OK. I have my smiley face. And now the smiley face to generate numbers, it needs a set of values to um, evaluate, right? So I will say, yeah, let's evaluate according to the center points of these boxes here, right? Of, of, of these rectangles. So these are our center points. I will just I'll just create a point component here just so that we know you know that as, that some sort of a point will come into our image sampler like like that. And then for each point we receive a number that is between 0 and 1, 0 meaning it's black, 1 meaning it's white. And I know that anything above 0 0.6 doesn't work, so I will just multiply multiply this uh, value by 0 0.6, right? Then 1 becomes, if it gives me 1, if it's white, it becomes 0 0.6. If it's black, it still stays as 0. Let me delete that slider here and connect, connect. Voila, we have our smiley face. That was easy, right? Um, I can actually do one more thing. Because here this smiley face is a little bit, you know, it's cool and all, but maybe we want to have something, <laughs> something calmer, so to say. Uh, so let me open it up, zoom into it. We can, for instance, uh, filter, blur it. Just a little bit, just like that, and save it. And then when we check it out here, it's a little bit softer, right? So, so the transition is a bit softer. So we can do that or we can uh, do uh, a gradient between black and white from here to here. Save. So then it becomes this kind of a co gradient. Maybe I'll keep it as a gradient. And that is that. Now to make it pretty, all we need to do is just uh, custom preview it with a color, with a white color. We go to display. Here on the right hand side, if you don't see the display tab, just click on this um, gear icon here and choose to have the display tab. And for background, I will just change this to solid color, make it black, like that. Perhaps uh, get rid of the grid and all of the axes and we have our cool form. Or, or not form, sorry, yeah, the, 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 the pattern, a cool pattern. And that is all, all I wanted to show you today. Um, of course, uh, having this pattern, just, just having it is, is cool and all. Let me revert to how it was before. Um, or actually, for now, I'll just keep it in perspective view. So we have this pattern here. What if I were to say, um, I, I will just make a cylinder here and I will explode it. I just care about the middle surface here. Just like that. And I will use um, rebuild on that surface. This is not a part of the tutorial. This, this is just to show how I would kind of continue working with this pattern. The pattern is already done, right? Um, 
so I'll just grab the control points maybe scale those out here um, no that's that that looks ugly scale in scale in like that maybe move them in here like that maybe this one is scaled out a bit but this is moved closer up I'm just doing a cup as you can see like a sake cup okay so we have that going on and that is a single surface it's very important that it is a single surface and I will take all of these curves and actually let me uh, join uh, let me flatten out the final output here and join them up to have as little amount of curves as possible bake them out as the default layer that's the only layer I have group yes please hit ok and I have my curves here so I'll just move them to the side so how do we take this pattern and map it on the surface again very important part is that this is a single surface right a cylinder was a single surface to begin with um, well we can just create a bounding box around it which means that it's just going to create the single curve because you know that the, the pattern is flat so I'll make yeah, I'll make it into a rectangle a rectangular surface by using planner SRF like that so I have a rectangular surface here and I have my um, what you call it my 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 cup surface here and I will just take this pattern uh, or rather I'll write flow along surface select objects to flow along surface I select my curves enter base surface target surface Tada! now I can delete that delete all of that it basically just transfers you know from one surface to another and then I can maybe I just quickly see CRV uh, set one curve uh, set multiple set multiple curves like that um, what do we use dendro maybe for this one convert curve to volume uh, radius should be like um, the cell size was one so radius 0 0.2 something like that and settings I really don't want to break it if I do break it let's call that this was the end of the tutorial as always the files and are in the video description so you lazy bastards can download them um hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you on sunday with some fresh new stuff back from almo bye and also for those who are interested i will just finish up with mm, with making this into a 3d printable mesh um, and I'll say bye again once I'm done. So create settings like that. Voxel size it needs to be 0 0.15, I believe. Mm, shit, 0 0.12 actually works. Does it connect though? It does connect here and there and this connects in other places, that's fine. Um, da -da -da, convert, intersect, volume difference, create mask. Actually, maybe I want it thicker, 0 0.3. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and then convert uh, volume to mesh with same settings 
we get an invalid mesh, uh, clean, combine and clean. Let's see if that helps. It does, super, bake it out, default, okay. Voila. Uh, let's go for Arctic. Eh, a bit, a bit rough, but, and a bit floaty, but I believe it's, it does the trick. I think if we do 0 0.4 though, and just give it, give it a second, bake, default, I just want all of these noodles to be connected. Like that, maybe? Are you connecting? You are connecting. And we end up with something like this, which you can <laughs> torture your 3D printer with. So now we are done. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, this short, small, little fun tutorial. And I will see you all on Sunday. Bye.